GTA Online may be going into its 11th year, but if you're watching this video, chances are you're one of the new players that's still coming into the game. And I get it, GTA Online can be an absolute mess and pretty difficult to start out with. So today I'm going to give you a leg up and tell you 25 things that I wish I knew earlier in GTA Online. The absolute worst thing in all of GTA Online is the post-op MC cell missions. So what if I told you there was actually a way to make sure you never get these again? All you need to do is grab your acid lab or MOC and park it in the exact spot where the post-op van normally spawns. By doing this, this is going to tell the game that no, don't spawn anything here because there's a massive truck here and the game's just going to give you a different cell mission. So there you go. You will have to memorize the spawn locations of the post-op vans of course, but once you do, this is a massive time saver. Next is gtaweb.eu. I promise this isn't sponsored. This website is just really, really good and every GTA player should be using it. This website is basically a map of GTA Online and it shows you the location of a lot of different things like all of your treasure hunts that you'll be doing when you start out the game, different collectibles, spawn locations of different items that you'll need. It genuinely is awesome and it's going to save you a lot of time when you're a new player trying to do all of these things. Looking down to spawn your vehicle closer to you. What I mean by that is when you spawn your vehicle through your interaction menu, you would have probably noticed that your vehicle never spawned in your line of sight and that's not an accident. Rockstar doesn't want your vehicle just spawning out of thin air in front of you. So it normally spawns behind you and you have to run a little bit to get to it. But you can actually just look straight at the ground so you're not looking at anything in front of you. And then because you're not looking at where the vehicle is going to spawn, it'll actually spawn as close to you as it possibly can. So there you go. Whenever you're requesting your vehicle, just look straight at the ground. Today's video is sponsored by the Corsair M75 wireless mouse. The M75 is amazingly lightweight, fast, and accurate. It's already giving me a leg up in my competitive games. And that's exactly what the M75 wireless does. It's sculpted to win. It's got a meticulously designed symmetrical shape for the most optimal ergonomics. The button placement is based on heavy hand studies and testing. And man, I can't get over the weight. It is so lightweight. It's 60 grams total. So how did Corsair get the mouse that light? Well, there's actually no RGB at all. That's to decrease the weight and increase the performance. And the design is sleek, sort of minimalistic. Basically everything about this mouse is designed for efficiency. It's got Corsair Marksman optical sensors, fast activating optical switches and a sub one millisecond wireless connectivity which all boils down to just trying to get you the best performance no matter what. I've never had a mouse this light so ever since I've been using it it's it's crazy man I've been clicking heads getting dubs you know how it is. So go get one, link will be in the description below and thank you to Corsair for sponsoring today's video. If you don't have a weapon workshop, which look, you probably won't because you're a low level. Once you've done one of the first dose story missions, you can actually just go over to the freak shop where Dax is and there's a weapon workshop you can use in there for free. This is pretty helpful because it can actually help you get some higher level weapons that you would normally have to obviously get a higher level to get. When you're starting out, it's honestly not a terrible idea to buy a few very cheap two-car garages in a bunch of locations around the map. See, because you can own multiple properties and apartments, you can actually take advantage of this and use these as spawn locations. So, for example, you can buy the cheap two-car garage at the top of the map in Polito Bay, then just change your spawn location to that garage, and you'll never have to drive all the way to the top of the map again if you want to go there. You can just change that, make that your spawn location, and find a new lobby. One that I definitely wish I knew earlier was using the left and right d-pad buttons to skip pages on your phone. So instead of, you know, spamming down or up trying to get to the top or bottom of your phone contacts, just click right or left on your d-pad and it's gonna skip five contacts. Makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier to get through who you want to call. The next tip is a pretty common one in a lot of games, but it does apply to GTA Online as well, and that's your first shot accuracy. So in GTA Online, the first shot you fire will always go at the very center of the reticle. So wherever you're aiming, that is exactly where the first bullet is gonna go. That means instead of just spraying your gun constantly trying to hit targets, you can either 
either tap fire or single fire your gun and you can basically just click heads and get headshots constantly. This next one will save you a lot of money. Switch lobbies about every 45 minutes to avoid paying business fees and maintenance costs. So you would have noticed every once in a while it pops up on the bottom of your screen that you just paid your staff, you paid your bills, you paid your mechanic, all of that stuff. And depending on how many properties you own, that can be over $10,000. Like it can get pretty expensive. But that only happens once every in-game day, which is 48 minutes real time. And that timer starts whenever you find a new lobby. So if you just change lobbies before 48 minutes goes off, then you won't have to pay the fees. Of course, this can be pretty annoying to constantly change lobbies, but if you are struggling for money and you need the money that's in your bank account right now, make sure you do it. Whenever you buy a Pegasus aircraft, it can get pretty annoying having to call up Pegasus to call that vehicle in all the time. So what you should know is if you own a hangar, a lot of your Pegasus aircrafts, you can actually fly into your hangar and that's gonna turn them into a personal vehicle. They will also still be a Pegasus vehicle as well. So if you still want to call them in through Pegasus, you can. But doing this also allows you to call them in through your interaction menu because they're now a personal vehicle, not just a Pegasus vehicle. Wearing a heist heavy combat outfit during the original heists will reduce a lot of damage. Now this will slow you down, you'll run a bit slower. But if you're doing the original heists, which if you're a low level player, you probably are going to do at some point. These can actually be very difficult to do, especially with random players. So having that extra health boost during these missions and heists is actually a pretty big W. Would 100% recommend doing it. This one's pretty straightforward, but the GTA Online matchmaking is kind of broken. A lot of the times you're probably sitting in a lobby just trying to get players to join. Now, if you're having a hard time finding players, which is probably going to happen a lot, it can get annoying when the countdown timer starts going down and you don't find enough players and it just starts a random mission with only two players. Players. Instead, what you can do is actually just close the lobby and then open it again and that will restart that countdown timer. So basically, you can keep this lobby open as long as you want and wait for as many people as you want to join. The next thing I wish I knew earlier was that I should be saving a scuba suit as a preset outfit. Because let's be real, it is going to happen every once in a while. You're going to get stranded out in the middle of a lake, the ocean, who knows? You're going to be in the water at some point and being able to quickly switch to a scuba suit is going to make those situations a lot easier to get out of. For pretty much all of your delivery missions, whether that's an ammunition contract, a motorcycle club bike delivery, auto shop client job, or just a tow truck mission, these can be very good ways to make money, but it can be very annoying when the location you need to get to is a long way away. So if you do find that the location you're driving to is a really long way away, you can actually just find a new lobby and it's not going to delete the mission. You can just start the mission again straight away and hopefully this time you'll get something a bit closer. So that tip should save you a bit of time. You've probably tried to do G's caches in your lobby. These are a pretty decent way to make money as a low level. And sometimes I will admit I feel like an idiot because I can't actually find the hidden cache. So there's two things you can do in this situation. Number one, you can actually just find a new session and it will change the location of the G's cache. Or two, like I mentioned earlier in the video, go to gtaweb.eu and it actually shows you all of the possible spawn locations for every single G's cash. That's pretty neat. If you're having trouble keeping your nightclub popularity up, one of the best things you can do is kick out a troublemaker out of your club, but these can be kind of difficult to get to spawn. They don't spawn that often. So what you can do is go outside of your nightclub, enter passive mode, and then walk back into the nightclub. That's going to spawn an eject troublemaker mission. So just walk over to the blue dot, kick them out, and your nightclub popularity will go up. Just keep in mind that this used to be a glitch where you could just spam this over and over and over again. It does does have a cooldown now so you can't just spam it but you can still do it every once in a while this one's pretty straightforward but i ignored it for way too long suppressors are awesome in gta online of course but they do reduce the total damage of the gun so don't put them on every single gun just have a couple or a few guns that you want a suppressor on for stealth missions and then don't put a suppressor on anything else buying businesses is expensive so before you do it you want to make sure that you're buying one in the best possible location now, I've done a guide on every single business in the game and showed you the best location to get them. Now, if you want to watch my videos, awesome. If not, there's a bunch of other videos on YouTube that will tell you the best location to buy every business. 
Because it might not seem like much, but buying a business in a bad location can actually cost you millions of dollars. Like it's crazy and it's a really bad decision to just buy the cheapest business a lot of the time. So don't waste your money. Make sure you look it up because this is a business that you're probably going to be using for a long time. Next, and I can't stress this enough. I wish I knew that I shouldn't be wasting my money on sports cars and supercars as a low level player. And I don't blame you if you do. Look, honestly, I get it. You play GTA online. You want to drive the cool fancy cars it makes sense and really in my opinion that's what i think the game should be about but for better or for worse gta online is kind of a military simulator at this point and a lot of players are just gonna blow you up if you're driving a car that doesn't have armor so early on instead of buying you know sports cars and supercars invest in things that are gonna treat you well in the long run things like armored vehicles things like businesses that can make you more money and trust me you're not gonna regret that decision the homing launcher is an awesome weapon, especially if you get it as a low level player, like this thing will seriously help you out in a lot of sticky situations. But what's annoying is the lock on system. A lot of the time it just locks on to vehicles you don't want to lock on to. Well, you can actually change the thing that it's locking onto with either the left or right bumper on your controller, or if you're on PC with seven and nine on the number pad. Another great way to make money is with payphone hits, but it can be kind of annoying if you have to go to the very top of the map to one. So from now on, I only want you to start your payphone hits from terminal. If you do it down here, this guarantees 100% that you will always get a payphone hit in the city as opposed to the top of the map. That's going to save you a lot of time and in GTA Online, time is money. So this is a pretty smart decision. Having a favorite bike gives you 30% damage reduction. It slowly heals you all the way to full health instead of just to 50%. And it gives you a 30% increase to gun damage while you're driving that bike. And yes, this does work for the Oppressor Mark II, but of course not the gun damage. Now, to set a favorite bike, it's actually just passive. You don't have to consciously go and do it. All you need to do is own an MC Clubhouse and whichever bike you have driven the most, so basically the game decides what your favorite bike is by time spent on it. Whenever you're driving that bike, you're going to get those benefits. This one's awesome. If you have two or more weapons with the same type of special ammo, so as you can see here, I have two weapons with incendiary ammo. The special ammo for these weapons is going to be instantly refilled when you join a new lobby. So I'm going to waste the ammo here, about one mag worth. Now let's find a new lobby. All right, we're loading in. And there we go, full ammo on both of the guns. So that's a neat way to save some money on ammo and save time from having to go and rebuy the ammo at your weapon workshop. You can unlock all modification options that were previously locked and get free classic colors, crew tire, smoke, basically just a bunch of things, as well as a 5% discount for other mods for vehicles in your own auto shop. So of course your auto shop does have its own auto shop. You know, obviously that makes sense. You can customize your cars in your auto Photoshop and you get all of those benefits for doing it. So yeah, good idea to customize your vehicle in your auto shop instead of like LS Customs. If you love to grind crates, listen up. This one's awesome. The terabyte is the fastest way to grind crates, but you're going to want to do this strategy. So what you do is step one, you have to have a heist setup active at one of your apartments. Then you want to park your terabyte right outside the entrance to that apartment that has an active heist. Then after every crate mission that you complete, Accept the heist invite that Lester is going to keep sending you over and over again. Exit your apartment and enter the terabyte. Easy. You know those annoying phone calls that you get over and over in GTA Online? Well, you can actually block them. Not completely, but you can significantly reduce how often they're going to call you. Now, I'm doing that on screen now. So just copy what I do. And this is going to just save you so much annoyance. Honestly, this has to be like the most annoying thing in the entire game. Maybe aside from post-op cell missions. And there you go, there's 25 things I wish I knew earlier in GTA Online. If any of these help you out, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing for more stuff like this. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Boys. Favorite color, money green. Paper. I've been on my grind since I was in the seventh grade. Had my first kid, I was only 17. Always a provider for my pack like Wolverines. But you won't find me on the mountaintop. Need no calculator. I